Thank you. You conveniently uh, did not mention another truth, so I thought I'd try to succinctly sure. share another truth that significantly happened this summer. When UN schools were bombed, power plants were destroyed, water supplies were destroyed, over the whole period that the Palestinians have been occupied, 28,000 homes have been demolished, educational infrastructure has been demolished, 1,800 civilians were killed this summer, Palestinian, 10,000 wounded, 300 babies, one years old, two, three, four, and children, 300 were killed by the Israelis, three is Israeli civilians right. were killed, three, as you know, 64 Israeli soldiers, South Africans fought against the South African regime. What's your question, please? I'm get to I, I know the facts. I'm very familiar with them. Maybe more than you think. 15 more seconds. The French fought against the Nazi occupation. Other Western powers... Are you powers comparing Israel to the Nazis? The, no. I'm saying it's Nazi-like behavior that the French fought against and that the Americans fought against. The Germans knocked down the Berlin Wall. So I ask you... What's your what question? What rights do the Palestinian people have to overthrow the Israeli regime supported by Americans to the tune of $8.5 million a day. And Good. what's your responsibility to deal with this situation? Thank you. Oh. Yeah. Thank you for your passion. Um, yeah, I'm very familiar with the facts that you said, and I'm not blinded. And I think the Israeli government also is very aware of what you're saying. Um, I think uh, Palestinian people need to have the courage to face Hamas and to throw them out of the uh, uh, Gaza Strip. When Hamas people... When Hamas people hide behind children in very populated areas and launch missiles and put an entire democratic country under the range of their missile. Israeli you had killing the children, not Hamas, that also is responsible. I'm talking about Israelis killing 300 children. Yeah, well, Israel asked uh, the Shuja'iya uh, refugee camp to evacuate. They gave them 48 hours to get out of the area. Hamas asked them to stay in the area. And when Hamas launch a missile from a populated area, what are you expecting? If you were the Prime Minister of Israel, if you were an Israeli citizen, you know, going to your work in the morning and you see a missile fly in the sky, how are you gonna feel about this? I think you're coming from a very uh, Hippocratic uh, person, I, I, a place. I don't mean to insult you, but you are blinded to the reality. It's not about, what, did you want to see thousands of Israelis killed? So you see an equal picture, you're comparing that was only 60 Israelis dead and thousands of Palestinians uh, uh, dead, and you, you think that this is not uh, just? This is not the reality on the ground. The reality on the ground, there is a radical, ideological, religious movement that does not care for the Palestinian national uh, agendas, and this movement is taking the entire region to destruction. Mahmoud Abbas and the Palestinian Authority are aware that the enemy is within, that their worst enemy is not Israel. They know that they can negotiate with Israel. And they know, excuse me, excuse me, and they know that Israel is not their worst enemy, but Hamas is their worst enemy. And you know, time will prove what I'm saying. Thank you for your question. Mr. Yusuf, I appreciate you speaking about the importance of saving human lives, moral rectitude, and really seeing reality where there are shadows on the wall instead of fixating on those shadows. Right. It seems we're actually in agreement about all these things. I'm, I'm happy to hear them from you. Right. You just have to explain one point that I'm a little confused on. Sure. Why, if you believe these things about the importance of saving human lives, do you defend the politics of a country that has, pr that has consistently impeded a peace process between two belligerent factions after Oslo, Madrid, Camp David, Annapolis, by violating international law and extending colonialist apartheid settlements into the West Bank? Why do you support the side in this conflict that is looking to further shed human blood and not solve it, that is, that is pandering to a radical religion? 
religious minority in its own right, just like you said in Hamas, within its own politics, when it very well could remove the IDF from the West Bank and disband the settlements like it did in Gaza in 2005. Why are you choosing this side of the conflict if you care about saving human lives? Okay. Well... You know, first of all, I'm not choosing sides here. You know, I'm, again... By working I'm, for the Shin Bet, you're not choosing sides? Uh, working for the Shin Bet was for the higher interests of humanity. It was not for a political uh, party. And the human interest of humanity is saving human lives. And I was very clear that we did not only save Israeli lives. Uh, if you, you can go back to the records and find how many Arabs, how many Muslims, how many Americans were killed in Hamas suicide bombing attacks, then the, you will understand that the mission of the Israeli government as a democracy was not to save Israeli lives only. Your life could be in danger if you were in a bus in Tel Aviv or Jerusalem. You would have been a target uh, yourself. I grew up in the West Bank. Before 1967, you know, when the Arabs came to try and to destroy the state of Israel and throw it in the sea, uh, to make it uh, food for the fish. Israel had nothing to do with the West Bank. The West Bank is a result of an aggression against the state of Israel, an attempt to destroy the state of Israel. And this is why we have the 1967 situation. For 60 years, the leaderships in the Palestinian uh, 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 territories and the Arab countries, Unfortunately, they did not try to build a Palestinian state. Israel was willing to give back that land to the Arabs and to the Palestinians. But their attempt was to destroy the state of Israel, and this is the source of the problem. If their attempt was to build a Palestinian state, there would have been a Palestinian state by now. But for 60 years, they tried to destroy the state of Israel, and now they're coming after 60 years trying to build a Palestinian state. This is why we have a problem. Israel withdrew from Gaza Strip. What do we have today in Gaza Strip? We have Hamas building tunnels, putting children and women as shields, and causing the death of thousands of people, inviting Israel for a war that does, Israel does not like to a muddy and bloody field. Is this what you want to see in the West Bank? I think it would be a big mistake given Palestinians a state in the West Bank before they approve that they're capable of controlling the mob on the ground. Mahmoud Abbas does not have authority on the ground. Hamas has the authority. Hamas is not a national organization. Hamas is a terrorist, religious, ideological organization. First of all, we need to see the strength of the Palestinian authority withdrawing Hamas and taking over the street and showing a perfect democratic uh, uh, responsibility and system. After that, I think it would be a good idea to give Palestinians uh, a Palestinian state. That, that, that was, Sorry, that was I've, got, your I've got to correct you on one point. You see that the Palestinians in the West is not Bank a debate. Not you ask, you ask your question no, and I answer. You're talking about, talking about looking away from shadows on the wall, right. but you're saying you're not recognizing that Israel violated the very UN resolution that gave it statehood by currently imposing colonial settlements in the West Bank. And you're saying that the Palestinians were first not to want their state? Israel violated the original You know, I'm not here to say who's first and who's second. I don't know how you interpret second. the Treaty of West Bank. You asked me, me about my personal opinion, I think it's a big mistake giving any Palestinian leadership any piece of land with open borders when we see the danger of ISIS. Do you know where ISIS, you know how far it is from the borders? When we see the rise of the Muslim Brotherhood in Jordan, when we see the situation in Syria, when we see the situation in Egypt, and we go until Mahmoud Abbas, the weak Mahmoud Abbas, who does not have control over his own people, tell him, okay, here is a free border, do whatever you want to do. Nobody will accept this, and I think if Israel accepts this, I will be the first to oppose. Thank, Thank you for your, your question. Hi. <laughs> Um, thank you for speaking. You spoke very beautifully, and I appreciated the metaphor about the sheep and the shepherd describing people who blindly follow their leadership. You um, can quote me if you like. Okay, I will. Um, but so I'll ask, do you agree that we can apply this metaphor to the American citizenry, politicians, and news media who continue to refuse to acknowledge and confront the injustice and violence perpetrated against innocent Palestinian civilians by the State of Israel? Hmm. You know, I think this is, there is no quick fix for the situation. First of all, we need to create an awareness again. You know, and one of the reasons that I'm speaking here, trust me, not to push uh, Israeli political agendas. 
and I served the State of Israel for many years. And when I was first in uh, deportation in this country, where was the State of Israel? They weren't there for me. And I almost was deported uh, to death. But I did not give up on Israel. Not because of any reason except I believe in the Israeli model. That region does not see real model of democracy. And you know, Israel is not only a, a political system. When we think about the Jewish nation, the Holocaust, what they had to go through, what they sacrificed, the light, the values, look at how many uh, filmmakers, artists, writers, thinkers, uh, scientists, how much this nation gave the world. And I find it impossible, you know, to be surrounded by all those enemies who are trying to destroy it just for being a Jewish state. And I know the motives and I know the mentality of the people. I support Israel because it's a democratic state. And I think, I think, the first thing American people need to do, you as a new generation, you need to understand, you need to choose. There are two models. The Islamic State model and a democratic model in the region. I'm not saying Israeli or Egyptian. You have to choose. The Israel is fighting on behalf of the Western world against radicalism, against the Islamic extremism. And if Israel fails in this uh, fight, who's going to do it? Are you going to do it? But Are you going to go to Iraq? Are you going to go back to Egypt tomorrow when the Muslim Brother took over? My question is, do you agree that in the spirit of taking, you know, taking the covers off of our eyes and not following blindly what our leaders have to say, that we should push, as American citizens, for more transparency in the news media, for more transparency from our government, and for a... Um, and for in order to let ourselves be truly educated to gain a real understanding of the violence perpetrated against the Palestinian people by the Israeli it's people. not against the Palestinian people it's the leaderships of the Palestinian, Palestinian 2000 this just this you know this man just this summer 2200 Palestinian civilians well, it's, were killed you know the Gaza. United States of America killed the hundreds of thousands of Iraqis you know the uh, Syrian regime is killing hundreds of thousands yes, of people and I agree that you know it is war is ugly you need you need I, I, t I tell you what you need to do. You need to face reality. War is ugly. If you invite people to do war, don't expect you know that's gonna be peaceful. I mean Hamas invited Israel for a war. They need to deal with the consequences. War is ugly. There is blood. It's I'm, as simple I'm as that. I complete agreement with you. I'm a. Yeah. I'm. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm those innocent, those, those, those innocent people don't. Okay, those innocent people, why, why don't, why, why those innocent people, why don't you come take the platform? Uh, are you here to speak or you have a question? What is it? What is it? Why, why didn't you go to Gaza and fight on behalf of Hamas? Why are you here? Why, why didn't you go to Gaza? Yeah, go protect those children. If you care for them. Why didn't you go and live their miserable life? and carry their pain. What do you know about the Palestinian pain? What do you know about the Palestinian children? <laughs> Silence is better. Silence for you is better. Because you're speaking of not truth. Answer my question. Um, so you don't believe, okay. You know.